this last video, because you know we got to get to the money, is from Rashad. Rashad was talking to Ian, D Ian Dunlap, who also goes by Master Investor, who is a really cool, cool dude. We, we go back and forth sometimes and talk about different things. But um, Rashad from Earn Your Leisure recently dropped a clip on Earn Your Leisure in which he was talking to Ian and he was saying that his worst investment that he's ever made in his life was buying land to ultimately build a home, purchasing a home. Now that sounds crazy, right? It absolutely sounds crazy to me because my best investment so far based off of my experience in building a home from land that I purchased, it was way better, way smoother and, and, and much better than actually purchasing a home turnkey. I don't want to say it yet. I want to let y'all see the video and then we'll react to it. Make sure y'all hit a like for the algorithm, subscribe to the channel and turn on your notifications. Let's get into it, y'all. You know what's crazy is the worst, you know, the worst financial mistake. I'm going to give you some game. This is some game that people can actually learn from. That's the thing about this show. We're going to mix some game in here, too. Um, most of the time, you would think that a bad financial mistake would be buying jewelry or spending money on clothes or vacation or, like you said, even, you know, spending money on, on women. Um, my financial, my worst financial mistake was buying a home. And oh, tell us more. This is something that you don't not the real estate play over. Caesar made you mad or what happened? <laughs> <laughs> he said his worst financial mistake. This is the game that they're giving you. All right. I've never had a problem with earn your leisure. I've never actually seen anything from a millionaire morning show perspective in which I had to. Or I've even really disagreed with them. I agree with them on, on when they said that it's a certain amount of money that you need in order to consider yourself rich, all of this stuff, right? He said that the, the worst financial decision that he's ever made was buying a home. Let's get the context, y'all. Let's get the context. Ponzi, Ponzi. Nah, I didn't Ponzi, get, Ponzi. <laughs> allegedly. I didn't get caught in that. I did not get caught in that. But um, so... You know, it's one of these things where a lot of times in life, um, you think is a good idea is actually a terrible idea. Yeah. But you don't fully realize that until you're actually in it. So, um, you know, buying a home, I, I purchased a plot of land, right? And the idea is like, all right, you know, you could buy, you could build a home from scratch, and that way, there's no energy in it. Um, you get to design it how you want to design it. Yeah. Everybody, it's like it's like the dream, right? To actually be able to build your own home. So let's add the context. <clears throat> so far, he's saying that because the way that he's describing it, that's not an investment. We got to get out of the mindset that a home is an investment. A home is not an investment. It's a place where you lay your head. Real estate that you rent out to other people. Real estate that you flip to other people. Real estate that you use from a business perspective is an investment. Now, is a home an asset? Is land an asset? Absolutely. But if you're not looking at it from an investment perspective and you're only looking at it like, oh, I can buy my home or I can build a home or something like that, you're looking at it the wrong way because you're going to lose 10 times out of 10 and, it's, and, and you're not going to do your due diligence to fully understand the same way that you would understand opening up a business or doing this or doing that. You're not, you're not approaching it the right way. And so building your own home is a dream for him, but it's not an investment if you're looking at it as a personal residence, okay? So let's continue. That's right, yeah. Well, just so happened that I purchased a, a home from a con artist. So, um, Jesus Christ. They didn't tell me a variety of different things when I purchased a home that I didn't know about, but long story short, one of the things was that there's a, um, there was supposed to be a huge water basin Okay. In my, in my backyard. If anybody doesn't know what a water basin and the water basin is like an area that, that gets flooded or has a lot of like rain or something like that, then they have to build a system in place to funnel the rain so it doesn't actually flood properties. And um, it's like a man-made river. It's like a man-made river of sorts. And then it actually ends at one point and, and that's like a, a catch basin where it actually catches the water. So Peter Investor, you're 100% right. The first thing that I do is when I when I acquire a piece of land and I've been taking you guys through the process inside of the Patreon and I've been giving people updates the entire time. The first thing that I do is I you got to get a survey, right? You got to do your due diligence. You got to call. I call down to the city. 
Um, I get a surveyor. I look at the previous uses of the land. I find out whether it's swamp land, whether it's something you can build on and all of that. And so what you have to do is you don't just the land is listed for sale, but even the realtors will say, hey, you got to do your due diligence. Or if you look at the, the listing, they say, hey, you got to call to find out whether or not you can build on it. You need to see whether or not you need a septic tank or a well or whether or not you got water and sewer that's connected to the street. You have to do your due diligence. So it's not that the land or the or the home that you buy in is a bad investment. It's your lack of due diligence and just trusting somebody else's judgment or ignorance that then leads you into spending more money than you normally would or you the sucker, right? So the quality of the people that you do business with, I do business with people that are great at what they do. I've been doing business with the same people for a long period of time. But the first thing that I do is I get the land surveyed. If you're going to spend tens and hundreds of thousands of dollars on acquiring the land and then possibly building on there, you got to understand the neighborhood. You got to understand the land. You got to understand, you got to call a city, right? So I've never had a bad experience. As a matter of fact, it was one piece of land that I looked at and there was the lady, I called her and she said, oh, Anton, but um, I said, why has it never been built on? And she said, oh, because the houses around it that was building on it, they built on it before they, they officially declared it is not swamp land, but um, I forgot what she called it. And she said, so you got to get a survey. And she said, as a matter of fact, I had another client that did a survey on it and I got the paperwork for you. And then you got to call the city. I had my people call the city. I had Rita call the city, my wife. She called and they said, yeah, you would have to go through this in order to develop it. And it would cost you an extra amount of money and so on and so forth. So we wound up not doing a deal. But all I did was make a phone call and I looked at the documentation. I realized that it wasn't something that I wanted to go through as far as all of the headaches that it had to take to do it. And you move on. If you call a city, they will tell you. They will literally say, oh, what's the plot number? What's the address? This is what's happening at this particular location. You shouldn't build here or you should build here. Or if you're going to build here, you got to go and uh, you know, do it over here. And this is the requirements for it. Every city, their job is to tell you what is wrong with the property and how it is that they're going to, how they can, you know what I'm saying, make sure that you have the best experience possible because they want you to develop, which ultimately raises the tax base and feeds into the coffers of the city. So it's, it's not really that difficult of a process, but because somebody may have a bad experience, it's almost like going through a bad relationship and then you qualify on all men or all women as trash. It's not. You just didn't do your due diligence and you got finessed by somebody that was a dancer. So my property was the catch basin. It was a, it was the end of the, the river way for the street. And um, it's like a huge canal in my backyard, right? So Damn. obviously that that's going crazy. So then I, you know, so I had to get a lawyer. One hundred percent. Go back right, and forth with his lawyer, and in the process, of actually firing the guy. But now I got to move the water basin underground, right? So now I'm I'm learning all this stuff. It's actually an education process. I didn't know anything about this, but you have an underground. You can have an underground water basin. It's like a huge a huge tank. That you okay. put underground, right? But now I have to actually get a civil engineer. If anybody knows a good civil engineer, let me know. I need a civil engineer because now I have to, um, my property is also not level. So I have to grade the property. I have to like flatten it out, um, which isn't as easy as you would think because you got to actually find a civil engineer that can actually draw up a blueprint to actually grade the property. Then they got to put the water basin underground. Then you actually have, when you put a water basin on your property, you have to have a system in place to actually, he should have just went and took the L, bro. I wouldn't have did none of that. I would have just took the L and just considered it a loss because that's a learning lesson. The lesson is always do your due diligence, always do your research. That's what I tell people all the time, even when it comes to stocks, when it comes to real estate, everything. Um, when me building this first property, I said that I know I'm going to spend more money than I normally would. I know it's some things that I don't know. But I have some good contractors. I have some phenomenal architects. I got some great people that's around me. Um, they save me a lot of money. The cost that it's going to take me to build the property that I'm building versus what, I'm, what I could sell it for based off of the comps that surround it because it's a property that was literally just built less than two, two or three years ago, like directly next to me is going to be significant. My cost is in line. I'm having a phenomenal experience. I just dropped a video yesterday on an Anton Daniels channel where I was taking people through and I was showing them the siding, the heating, uh, the, the um, HVAC, 
Um, the electricians was there. The plumbers was there. And everybody is working, and it's going to be up. This property that I'm building right now, the first property that I'm building, um, versus the ones that I got turnkey, it's going to be done in less than two months. Three months max. But two months, it'll be turnkey. It'll be done completely. And we're going to be rocking and rolling. You like kind of surround the property, right? Um, so, so you got a moat. Yeah, basically. You're going to put some alligators in there? Maybe. It may be. Maybe. At, at this point. Um, so, man, this is a whole thing. Two years, almost two years, right? I only have the foundation. So I wasted money, a lot of money, because I'm still paying taxes every single month, right? Um, my mm -hmm. loan expired already. Then I had to renew the loan. Then I got to renew the loan again. I'm paying a penalty because the loan is already expired, my construction loan. So I got to... All right. Um, I like Earn Your Leisure. I think that they do some great... They bring some great people in the room and stuff. Here's what I'm at. Here, here's my question. What do you mean you got a construction loan? Everything is with... If we, listen, if you get money... And I'm assuming that them boys over there is getting money. For the sake of conversation, the type of conversations that they have, all of the game that they're giving on a regular basis, I'm assuming that you're getting money. What are we talking about a loan for? Everything we do over here in the Chasers, everything we do over here in the Chasers is self-financed. Ain't no banks, ain't no loans, ain't no hard money loans, ain't no financing, ain't none of that. You got to renew the loan. You paying interest on the loan. If I'm buying land, I'm buying cash, bro. I'm buying it. And that's just me personally. I'm not financing. I'm not doing none of that junk. Just, just me. I'm just going to own it all right. I'm not doing no loans. I don't need no credit. I don't need none of that. We just go in. We buy cash. We build it from scratch. We hire our own contractors. We pay our, our architects. We we do our surveying and shit. I'm, Excuse me, I'm sorry for all of the people that's watching in the church. We do our ch surveying and stuff. If you getting that type of money, which I'm assuming that they getting that type of money, I'm not doing no loans. Land for loans? Nah, I'm just going to buy mine and I'm going to build mine from scratch. Because I ain't got to deal with that. And he's saying that he's paying taxes every month. For me, you pay taxes once, a, like every, you pay the winter taxes and you pay the summer taxes. Because when you own it outright, you don't have to deal with the monthly cost and escrow and then, and then putting yourself in escrow in order for you to go into taxes, right? I ain't got time for that. I just pay the winter taxes and then I pay the, the summer taxes. I'm paying a penalty every month on that. Yeah. That's crazy. I have to pay a lawyer. So I have a lawyer fee that I'm paying. Um, I have a consultant, an engineer. So I have to pay him. When I do get the civil engineer, I'm going to have to pay for the civil engineer's work. Then I'm going to have to actually pay for the water basin, which is at least a couple hundred thousand dollars. Then I'm going to have to yeah. pay the to collect some water. Well, it's a whole system and it's underground. Um, so it's like a huge like tank. Um, then I'm going to have to pay to, to grade the property. That'll probably be a couple hundred thousand dollars. Long story short, looking back on that, that's take is going to sell tonight. Facts. <laughs> Looking back on this, for anybody, my this is my advice for anybody: never build a home. It's much easier to just buy a home that's already built and just do renovations to that house. Listen, respectfully, respectfully, I've I've done both now. I can officially say, because I never give advice on anything that I'm not actually doing myself. Um. We broke ground on a second home. We designed in the third one. We just, we about to acquire some more land. And um, it's been a phenomenal experience. It's been the best learning experience and the best experience. And financially, it's going to turn out to be a better investment than me buying turnkey. Okay. And I buy cash. I, I don't do no financing. Let me tell you something. Buy land, but do your research. Buy land and do your research, okay? Or do your research on the land that you're purchasing. It's the best experience that I've ever had in my life. 100%. 100%. No, you're wrong, Mr. Hylel. He's, he's right. The cost of materials is expensive right now. That's not true. See, that's how I know that y'all don't know what y'all talking about. The cost of materials is low 
right now compared to what it used to be. As a matter of fact, the cost of lumber and materials used to be four times what it is right now. So let's just say, for example, you get it, you get a quote to where it's going to cost you $36,000, $30,000 today of what it's going to cost for materials. It used to cost $120,000 for you to get the same materials. The cost of materials has went down. Y'all wrong. Hello? Yes, sir. The door is open. All right, bye. Y'all wrong. You're absolutely wrong. The cost of materials is significantly lower than it was one, two, three, four years ago, five years ago. The cost of lumber, the cost of materials, the cost of aluminum, the cost of siding, the cost of labor, it's all down. It's 100% down. And I have the receipts and the documentation in order to prove it. He's wrong. Um, that would be my advice. That's, that's a gem that you can use, that you can learn from my, my previous experience. Buy a home that's already built and do renovations as opposed to building a home from scratch. And then these, con these contractors are all con artists. How many uh, items do I got? What is that? Uh, I'm not sure. I think it's a TV stand. Okay, so that's going over here. You can't trust them. You they can't all, say all, but ma a great majority. A great majority. They yeah. all. They're trying to get. They're trying to do the the cheapest work possible to make as much money as possible. It's a whole thing. So uh, unless you have time to really like dedicate and you have a lot of information, it's not. It's not something that I, I advise at all. So that's some information for you out there if you're interested. Do you think um, having a busy schedule, running the media empire? played a factor in you not being a check upon them as much as you should have or like if someone's thinking of buying a home and they don't want to follow the advice what checklist would you put in place to make sure well the first, the first thing you gotta do is get a good attorney um a, a thorough thorough at, at closing like your closing attorney right because that was the thing with my situation it was never none of this stuff was ever in any document that i signed but it was with the town mm. but who's going to go to the town to check something like you just get the documents you get like 50 pages of documents yeah, you don't know you're going you know so the guy was a real slickster and he hit it and you know he was like well it was with the town it's up to you to do your due diligence to go to the town to get the blueprint from the town like i said nobody's going to do that so the first thing to do is um don't trust anybody get a get a thorough pit bull attorney to make sure that they look through everything sniff it out um, because yeah, you end up getting screwed, man, and it's um, you could end up end up really wasting a lot of money. Yeah. Damn, that's. Cool. Yeah, I, it, it's it's weird that he's saying that because, again, my my experience has been phenomenal. Uh, the same person, and I do business with the same people over and over again. The same person that came up with the design, um, and he's a home builder that helped me build my restaurants as far as the designs and the blueprint, the same architect. It's the same architect that I got that's designing and building my homes. It's the same architect that helped me secure all of the contractors. And all of these contractors are the same contractors that he used to build his home and the homes that he's building on a regular basis. So he's just had a personal bad experience with somebody that finessed him. Um, I don't understand the financing aspect of it. I don't understand why he's doing certain things. I've never had to get a lawyer um, in order to have certain duns at all. I just go through, I read through it, I make sure that I do business with the same people that I've been doing business with that help me buy, or the, or the same realtors that I bought turnkey homes from, and then I also am using the same people in the same titling company to get stuff done at closing, right? So he just had a bad experience, but absolutely, this is the one thing that I'm going to disagree with him on, 
He's 100% wrong when it comes to building homes. Oh, that's beautiful. He's 100% wrong. Building homes is possibly the most cost-efficient way for you to make as much money as possible versus, versus how it is that they're trying to continue to tell you to finance and then, and then uh, renovate a home. I don't believe in that at all. 